Hello everybody, Mr. Storm here. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Online Shadowbringers. In the last episode, we ran through the Grand Cosmos Dungeon, uh, defeated all the familiars uh, in that area, and met the Numo, who supposedly has the knowledge that we need to be able to get our friends' souls back in their bodies where they belong. Uh, the Numo was quite reluctant to provide this information, and um, we had to use the Numo's words of power to get them to do what we want. So, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. So we need to go head into the ocular at the, Chris at the Crystal Tower, and... Um, see what the next step in the process is going to be. So, that's what we're going to go ahead and head on over and do. And I'm assuming that this is going to be a cutscene of some description. Alright, enter the ocular. I'm sorry? You mean to tell me not only that the return of night was your doing, but that you hail from another world as well? Everything we told you, of the Source, the Shards, the Seven Umbral Calamities, all of it is true. I realize how fantastical it sounds, and I would not blame you for doubting our testimony. But given your expertise, you must surely have noted the peculiar nature of their souls. Any other time and I would have dismissed your stories as balderdash and flummery. But upon closer inspection, tis plain their souls are far denser than is normal, and that they do not possess true bodies. Save you. Your body is your own, and your soul is the densest of them all. Hmm. As I said before, were it not for their heroism, the skies over Norvrant would still be awash with light, the realm yet at the mercy of Vorthree and the Sin Eaters. After all they have done for our home, seeing them safely back to their own, it seems the very least we can do. Hmm. Your tale is intriguing. Yes, very intriguing indeed. Simply to hear it is fitting payment in itself. As for your friends, I can but agree. Their valorous deeds on behalf of Norvrant are deserving of recognition. Of their own fitting payment. You will help us then? I will. I would see my knowledge put to good use for a change. I do have one condition, however. I am not the spry young Numo I once was. As such, I will require assistance in my fieldwork and testing. It would be our pleasure. We'll be laboring for our own benefit after all.
Ah, field work and testing. Should have known it wouldn't be quite that simple. And also, yes, our soul is the densest of them all because we have actually been rejoined eight times now. Because um, Ardbert rejoined his own soul to ours during the battle with uh, Emmett Selk. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, see what we need to do. All right, you have spun quite a tale, but tell me, have you given any thought as to how you might return to your world? White Arasite, you say? An intriguing proposition. But one which fails to account for the present state of your souls. They have become highly charged, likely as a consequence of having maintained tangible forms for so long. In such an energetic, unstable state, there is no telling what may happen to their souls within the Arasite. They could very well become immutable to transference, never to be restored to their bodies then would it be possible to force our souls into a state of dormancy prior to the transference? In theory, yes. But the soul is not a candle to be snuffed out and relit on a whim. Well, that sounds ominous. What exactly would rendering our souls dormant entail? In order to maintain a corporeal form, your souls constantly draw ether from your surroundings. This process must be halted and the resulting surfeit of ether removed. Your minds would ultimately be separated from these faux bodies of yours, rendering you incapable of interacting with the world around you. A cruel fate under normal circumstances, but one which will be rectified upon your return home. Leaving lifeless husks, like those poor souls at the inn at Journey's Head, corrupted by the Sin Eaters, their ether made stagnant by the light. Corrupted? Stagnant? Might I see these unfortunate individuals? Why? Do you think you might be able to help them? I might, or I might not, but I shan't know for sure until I have seen their condition firsthand. Then I would be glad to take you to them, on the understanding that you won't do anything which might increase their suffering. It was my faith in man I lost, not my compassion. While I see no need for all of us to accompany you, while you escort our guest to the inn, I will assist Oriange in creating the requisite Arasite. I believe my talents will be better applied to that endeavor as well. Might I leave the three of you to assist Beklug as necessary? Alright, let us make for Amarang then. All right, so we need to, need to head over to the inn at Journey's Head. That's an easy enough teleport. All right, so let's see how this is going to go. Ah, oh, it's Haldric. Or Hulric. So this is Hulric, is it? Yes, his etheric balance leans perilously toward the light. Towards stasis. What do you suppose will happen to him? Not too bright, are you, boy? The same as all poor souls corrupted by the light, he will become a Sin Eater. You don't know that. You defeated the Wardens and banished the light from the night sky. Hulric was completely unresponsive before, but now... He is mumbling. Then perhaps there is yet hope. Hmm. If I may, there is a treatment I wish to administer to the patients. What sort of treatment? 
In the course of my studies of the soul, I once created a tonic which could temporarily s stimulate the ether in one's body. After some refinement, it came to be used by the Knights of Verbert. Then for far dark darker purposes. Lest it fall into the wrong hands, I swore never again to make it, but for their sakes I will break that oath. It is not like to reverse the stagnation, mind you, but it should offer some measure of relief. Alright, treat the patients with the soul tonic. Alright, well, that was quick. Alright, Totten. Todden stares blankly at you. It would seem the tonic has had no effect. Alright. Hmm? What is this warmth I feel in my chest? Okay, well that produced some reaction. I would have thought that we would have been like sent off to gather ingredients or something, but I guess not. Uh, Voine? I, f I feel warm, and my legs, they don't feel as heavy. Alright, well, there was some reaction for some of the patients. Uh, now then, have you noted any change in the patients? A notable rise in body temperature and increased motor, fu motor function, in most of the patients at least. The more severely afflicted show no response. As I feared then. Tis true that with the restoration of night, the corrupting influence of light will no longer grow, and yes, their bodies will naturally return to equilibrium given time, but this holds true only for their corporeal ether. Their incorporeal ether, that is, of the soul, is not so easily mended. Which is why those in the later stages of corruption, like Holrek, appear unaffected by your tonic. Precisely. The boy's soul is too far gone, his mind held together by the finest of threads. There is a chance he may one day recover, of course, but it could take years, decades even. By the gods, he could wake to find himself an old man. A fine reward for his persistence, the opportunity to mourn the life he never had a chance to live. No, there must be something we can do. Look, I realize this is not why we petitioned your aid, but do you think it's possible we can find a way to hasten their recovery? Maybe. Nor do I think it impossible that in treating them we might learn something of the relevance to your own predicament. Alright, so I guess that's what the project is going to be. Alright, we're going to take the silver pieces because we don't really need the food. All right, then. So let's see what this is going to be. Beck Lug is ready to speak of the metaphysical. Oh, boy. I suspect the Crystal Exarch has told you of my past, that I was once a mage of the Royal Court of Verbert, and that Soulcraft was my field of study. The tonic you administer to the patients... Uh, here is one of the fruits of my labors. I hope to do great things for the kingdom. But in the end, my knowledge brought only suffering, a plague the like of which none had ever seen. In the hands of unscrupulous men, what should have been my greatest triumph instead became my greatest shame. Alright, at least the Warriors of Light brought those responsible to justice. Yeah, we're... Rather familiar with the story. Aye, that they did. I shudder to think what might have happened had they not. 
But let us return to the task at hand. Finding a means by which we might revitalize these people's incorporeal, incorporeal ether. Uh, do you think it can be done? With the sky still ablaze with primordial light, I would call it an exercise in futility. But now, now we may have a chance. The method I have in mind will entail the conjuring of a, f of a familiar. They are able to amplify the energies poured into them, making them the perfect conduit for the ether revitalizing magics we will ultimately employ. If you're about to launch to a lengthy explanation of the metaphysics of your plan, don't bother. I'd rather get on with doing whatever it is that needs to be done if it's all the same to you. Uh, whatever reagents must be procured or spells invoked, I'll do it. I admire your spirit. Very well. Your first task will be to gather the necessary materials. The purest of waters and finest of clays, as well as the fey lantern, a fey lantern brimming with pixie magic. If you're convinced the resulting familiar could help the patients, fine. Alphano, the water and clay will be simple enough, but I think you know what we'll have to do to get the lantern. You don't mean. The pixies took quite a liking to us before. If we humor them with our company, I'm sure they'll be willing to help us. I could ask Fail O. Fine. We'll pay a visit to Ilmeg, though I never thought you would be the one to suggest going back there. I am impressed you've been there at all, let alone befriended the Fey folk. Oh, while you're about it, seek out the new Mo of Pliny. They will be able to supply you with the water suitable for our needs. Right, let's get this over with, shall we? There still remains a matter of the clay. Might I prevail upon you to find it? I figured we would be getting the Fey Lantern, but I guess we're going to get the clay. Alright, so uh, where can we find this stuff? Clay from Amarang would likely be best. Know you of anyone who might be able to assist us? Uh, we could ask the miners at Twine. Ah uh, yes, they'll be able to point you to the right direction, I am sure. While you and the twins are occupied, I will see if there is aught else I can learn of the stagnation which afflicts the people here. Alright. So we're gonna go and ha have a chat with Magnus and see if he knows where this clay is that we can use. Are they able to get the uh, Talos repaired? Ayame, well, what a coincidence. You've come at a good time. We've just this moment finished repairing the Talos, and Trolley, you lot took to Nabatharang. Well, there you go. The trolley was no trouble, but the Talos would have been another matter had we not had a visit from Master Chai. Oh, really? He offered us a share of the leftover building materials from Daedalus Stoneworks, as well as a few trade secrets to help us along. Clever man, that Chai Nuz. He seemed pretty keen on the ideas I had for putting the giant Talos to work. Like a giant trolley! But Magnus still refuses to see all the good we could do with it. <laughs> okay. You're entitled to your dreams, Jarek, but that doesn't mean you can go harassing our guests with them. Master Chai was just being polite. And something tells me Ayame here didn't come all this way to talk about trolleys. Uh, what is it you need, friend? We need some clay. I see, and this familiar requires clay from Amarang. Well, look no further. If anyone can find you some quality clay, it's us. Saying that, it isn't exactly a commodity nowadays, but there must be some lurking somewhere or other, waiting to be dug up. If I'm not mistaken, there was a time when they used to take clay from Mount Biran mines to make adobe bricks. 
place is swarming with coyotes now, but if you're after the good stuff, you could do worse than look there. I think I could probably deal with a few coyotes. Alright, search Mount Biren mines for lumps of pristine clay. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That place is swarming with coyotes and other things. Easiest way to get there is just follow the tracks. I can fly. Easiest way to get there is to fly. <laughs> Okay, well, there is our destination. Okay, one of three. I wonder if we're going to get a visit from coyotes. Yep. So we need to deliver this back to Beck Lug. Lug. Let's teleport ourselves back there. That was fairly simple, straightforward. Alright, the twins have returned in one piece at that. I was convinced the pixies would turn at least one of them into a garden ornament, but no. Uh, yeah, we've established a bit of a rapport there, and, you know, we're best friends with their king, so... Um, I, it's not going to be a problem. Alright, you have the clay, I take it? All right, wonderful. We need but combine the clay and water, then heat the mixture with the Fey Lantern. After that, it will be a simple matter of setting upon a suitable form and performing the necessary incantation. Uh, Beck Lug, I have a question. In the event that we had need of this spell and you weren't around, uh, would it be possible for another to perform the incantation? Assuming they possess the requisite skill, yes. Hullrick and the others have suffered so much, and I swore to do everything in my power to save them. If there's a chance this spell could do that, I would be the one to invoke it. Hmm. Mayhap you should be the one to do so. A deep understanding of the subject's physical state combined with a strong desire to help them can drastically increase the magic's effect, and you are plainly more familiar with these people than I. I dare say there are few in all of Norvrant more dedicated to finding a cure. Is that not so, Ayame? Uh, absolutely. She's the best woman for the job. I'll give it my all for Hallrick, for Tesslene. Alright, then we are all of a mind on the matter. At least I should be the one to conjure the familiar. And what shape are you going to give it? Let us begin. I trust you've prepared the clay. Uh, 
Very good. Now, I would have you sculpt for me a porksy. Plump, with floppy ears and a short curly tail. A porksy. I think I know what you mean. There we are. H how's that? Not the artist, I see. <laughs> well, it is certainly creative. <laughs> There's no denying that. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm no artist. Very funny. Pay him no mind, child. Though it may look like a grotesque parody of reality, it is what the Invoker believes that matters. You're not helping. But I speak the truth. If successful, this incantation will turn imagination into reality. Which is why the only thing of import is what you believe this figure embodies. You must focus. Hold the Porksy's image steady in your mind's eye. Now then, as I taught you, relax and allow your energies to flow. With flesh of clay I bid thee rise, on wings of dreams to touch the skies. What once was idle fantasy, I call forth to reality! Not bad for a first attempt. Now, let us see what can be done for young Halric. Through the operation of the magics you invoked to animate this familiar, it is now replete with the energies required to stir the boy's soul. You need but give it a name, and it will do as your heart desires. A name. All right, I've decided. Now. Go, Angelo!
Well, that was something. Though it does seem short-lived. Alright, how is he, uh, Becklug? Did it work? I believe it did. You and your fledgling familiar have done well. If my eyes do not deceive, a hint of color has returned to his soul. Gods, I would jump for joy if I weren't so exhausted. We're so close now, Hallrick. As you are even now in the process of discovering, this magic asks much of the Invoker. What you may not have realized is that the same is also true of the subject. As such, we must proceed with caution. However, with further treatment, I have the utmost confidence the boy will make a full recovery. Observing the reanimation of his stagnant soul has been most enlightening. I will need time to put my theories to the proof, but I believe I can fashion a spell to produce the opposite effect. That is, to induce stagnation. Thus enabling our safe transport back to the source via Arasite. A thought occurred to me about this treatment. Uh, Becklug said when the soul is rendered dormant, the mind is separated from the body, that a person becomes incapable of interacting with the world around them. Does that not sound a lot like some of the tempered back in the source? Not really. It is the fate of most tempered to become slaves to primals, save in a handful of cases, or am I missing something? If I can master this technique, the art of revitalizing the soul, I know of at least one in the source who could desperately use such treatment. Uh, Gabu. Yes. Exactly. His condition is uncannily similar to Holrex, is it not? The only difference being that his soul was suffused with earth aspect ether instead of light. It follows that if his soul is subject to a similar kind of stagnation, there may be a chance we can save him, right? Forgive me, but who is this Gabu fellow of whom you speak? I see. His condition does sound similar, yet there is much and more about the soul that remains unknown even to me. I say this not to discourage you, you understand, but to remind you that this is delicate work we do here, work requiring patience. Of course, and as long as there is hope for the patients here, I will devote whatever time is needed to see this through. But I refuse to spend ta that time in idleness. If it's all the same to you, I'd like to stay here with Angelo and continue with their treatment. The two of you should return to the Crystarium with Beck, uh, Beck Lug and see if you can make some headway with their newly posited theories. Alright, I would tell you to rest first, but I see you're not to be convinced. Ah, the fire of youth. Alright, let us return to the Crystarium then. Finally, I found you. Okay, who's this? Ah, Kaishir. Uh, Kaishir, what are you doing all the way out of here? There's trouble back in Yulmar. Lady Chai's beside herself, sighing, pacing, the whole lot, near enough, begged me to go and find you. Sighing and pacing, you say? It must be urgent. I take it I will be returning to Crystarium alone. Go on, then. It's not as if I have anything for you to do. Thank you, uh, Becklug. Sorry for bothering you and all that, but she says the future of Yulmore is at stake. Alright then. We'll have to go see what's up. But I think that is good for today. So go ahead and take a break here. And then see what's going on in Yulmore when we come back for next episode. So... For now, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.